I'm so excited you're with us this morning. And what I absolutely love about this is, you know, I've, I've met you once before. You're such an amazing person. And what really struck me about you is that you are not only such a smart and intelligent chiropractor, you have such an amazing story of how you started to get into chiropractic and how it changed your family as well. But the passion that you have for not only empowering the community and the world as to what health and wellness really is, is what I think is so exciting about having you today. Um, So tell us, Dr. Dam, how did you get into chiropractic? Well, yes, I mean, it's definitely, clearly I'm very excited, very passionate, very, very focused on what it is that, you know, we do. As, uh, as as chiropractors and as, as this chiropractic community, and you know, obviously, it's a passion for teaching about this unbelievable inborn wisdom, this universal intelligence, or this innate intelligence that exists within our bodies that can bring about awesome restoration and maintenance of health and healing for a lifetime. And something I saw early on really kind of uh, you know connected the dots for me. And it happened, uh, it really happened in my own family. And it was something that I saw with my own father. My father is 71 years of age today. And when he was seven years old, he was playing in a, in a summer camp in a lake. And he found a slide. And uh, that other kid had been going down. And he uh, walked up to the slide, got to the top of the slide, and he decided to go down head first. Oh, my gosh. Well, he had no idea what was waiting for his head. There was a cast iron, cast iron bathtub oh. waiting for his head. I had no idea it was there. It was placed there by a couple of crazy kids who were playing around the bath, uh, around the uh, slide before he got there. Oh my gosh! And he came down, and his head, you know, virtually turned into a the human battering ram, and uh, oh. <clears throat> massive head trauma when he collided with the bathtub, split his skull wide open, and just uh, use your imagination on the on the on the extent of that that trauma right there. Oh my lord! Um, got knocked out cold, sank to the bottom of the lake, almost drowned, and uh, a lifeguard thankfully was able to spot my dad, got him got him to the hospital, they patched him back up, laid there for many, many, many days, and then actually uh, ended up going home. When he got home, he ended up developing these these crushing migraine headaches as a, as a young boy. Wow. And uh, my grandparents were concerned, um, you know, brought him to the doctors, mm-hmm. no one can, you know, figure out what was wrong with him, they couldn't get him answer solutions. They basically told my dad, you know, you're just going to have to learn how to live with these really for the rest of your life. And uh, so he proceeded to do so. Not wow. realizing there were other options and solutions, he just believed uh, the allopathic approach. He, he put, you know, my father's family, my entire family, always put their faith in what medicine told them. So, and uh, you know, and obviously, you know, they they took that advice. So, my father proceeded to live with these headaches for the next forty years of his life. I mean, crippling migraine headaches. So, there I am, forty years later. You know, I'm growing up watching my father walk around the house with his head in his hands, having, you know, having these torturous migraine headaches where he'd have to lie in a dark, quiet room, no noise, no light, non-functional, disabled, handicapped from these headaches. Ended up taking so many medications that they started, you know, messing with organs, affecting his kidneys, his liver, his stomach. He used to literally eat bottles of aspirin. Mm. Um, medications that ended up destroying his thyroid. <clears throat> and he, uh, he ended up uh, destroying his thyroid and the doctors put him on Synthroid for his thyroid for 34 years. Regulated his uh, thyroid because he started developing all this sequelae that go along with an unfunctional thyroid, overweight, uh, cold all the time, and all kinds of different lethargy, all kinds of issues. Then, of course, the medications didn't do any, any good for his brain chemistry, which caused a lot of irritability, moodiness, you know, all kinds of issues mentally. And so, you know, his problem just continued to get worse, hopeless, uh, desperate, fearful uh, for his health and his life, and we searched high and low, never able to get any answers, and my brother, many years later, happened to be driving down the road at the University of Florida as a student, got into a really bad car accident, uh, the doctors told him that he may need surgery, and drugs, spinal surgery, all you know, the crazy, aggressive approach that many you know, allopathic physicians take. Uh, my brother was going to do it. I'm going to follow that instruction because that's what we always did in my family. We always followed that allopathic approach or methodology. Mm-hmm. My brother, my brother's best friend at the University of Florida happened to, had, had, he had been helped by a chiropractor and he said, my brother, you, you, you should go down the road and see my chiropractor. 
this guy not only helped me, this guy in fact saved my life. You should go see him. And my brother's response to that uh, offer was, um, what is a chiropractor? He had no clue what that was. He had no concept of what that was. We never went to one in my own family. We never would have considered going to one because we were always allopathic in our orientation. And, and you know, approach. and and Doctor Dan, right, the, my brother, the... he was he was very uh, desperate, out of desperation and out of trust for his good friend. Uh, he decided to make a huge leap of faith and go to the chiropractor. And within three weeks, had full health and function restored to his body. He didn't need the drugs nor the surgery. Oh, so wow. he went back to the chiropractor, learned more about it, and he got so excited that he himself decided to become a chiropractor. Oh, three wow. months into school, on his first break, he went home down to South Florida. Walked in the house, went looking for my father, found my dad suffering through one of his crippling migraine headaches, and uh, walked up to my dad. Um, he found the atlas vertebrae, which is the first bone in the neck. Uh, he found it subluxated, out of alignment, creating uh, an interference to the, the neurology, to the very brain body communication um, that's required for a healthy body. And my brother, through palpation, only three months of school, located this area and started adjusting my father. While he was home on break, he did a series of adjustments, went back to school, six months went by, my father called my brother on the phone and said, I, I can't believe this is a miracle. The headaches are gone. Wow. Uh, 22 years later, to this day, my father has not had one of those headaches off of all the medications, kidneys, liver, all those organs healed up. 71 years of age, takes zero medications, off his synthroid after 34 years. Wow. Um, he's back to his middle military weight of 50 years ago. He's lean, he's healthy. At the age of 71, my father does up to 250 push-ups per day. Oh, is um, that he great? Could, he couldn't do that when he was 31. He could do that at 71. He's in better shape, better quality of life. He's lean, healthy. His brain chemistry is normalized now. And he's got full quality of life restored. And I saw this happen. I was a pre-med student, and I said, you know what? I'm missing the big. I'm missing the big picture here. You know, it's not. There's more to it than just drugs and surgery. Yes, drugs and surgery are essential. In emergency situations, you break a bone, have a laceration, a burn. Obviously, chiropractors can't help with that. That's because there's an urgent situation. But we're talking about healthy lifestyle, quality of life. And I saw that. I'm like, holy smokes, I want to learn more about it. I want to understand it. And I became passionate about it. And I left medicine behind, and I decided to go to chiropractic school to deliver this unbelievable gift, above, down, inside, out, natural health restoration from the innate healing wisdom of our bodies by working with the nervous system. And that's what we do as chiropractors, restoring uh, structural integrity to the nervous system, neurological integrity, and by doing that, um, elevating healing potential to its highest level. And when that happens, you can heal at your best, you can perform at your best, um, you, can just, you, can, you can work and live at your highest potential. And that's really what chiropractic is about. It's I about love that. At your, your highest potential. I love that. And Dr. Dan, the one thing, you know, hearing your story, because I've heard this story before, you know, I, it almost makes me want to cry a little bit. And I'll tell you why. Because of the thousands and thousands of people that we've seen over time, there's a little bit of somebody that's not only functioning at a higher level of health and vitality, but they're just slowly, slowly dying. They're not living up to their potential in any way, shape, or form. And you can't help but think about how does that affect everybody else in their life. We talked a little bit about that belief system of the allopathic model of how, you know, if the medical doctor says blank, most people will move forward, believe it, and not really look down another path. And one of the most amazing things that I often think about, you know, being in this chiropractic world and, um, and understanding things is you absolutely save lives on a daily basis. And I walk away from our whole entire community realizing that between the pharmaceutical industry spending an estimated $35.5 million a day in advertising, the lobbyists that are out there, the medical model, the AMA, that they're literally in educating us into a belief system that we don't necessarily have that power to head down different paths. And what I'm hearing from you is that you know your family may have fell, fallen into that just a teeny bit, but when your brother entered into chiropractic college, you literally saw amazing changes begin to occur with your father, who now his whole life has changed. How has that made you, and I can only imagine, such a passionate chiropractor to instill that message into your community so that other people can be well? 
I think really the very message that our communities need, the, the, the hope that's given to them, is not necessarily even the message that their spine, their nervous system regulates every organ in their body, that brain is used to control, transmits life, health, healing, energy, force, and power, strength. Everything your body needs to exist and live and be healthy comes from the brain through the spinal cord out to the organs of the body. Even, but even greater than that message, even greater than the scientific clinical application of what it is that we do, um, the greater message and the, the, a message that gives hope and, and, and just it gives people uh, um, an understanding of how powerful their body is, that they are designed to be well, they can be well, they can be restored back to life and health and healing, they can have their quality of life back, that we don't talk about disease, we talk about dis-ease, that's our word, that's our nomenclature in chiropractic, why? Because disease connotes and it's the fact that it's a permanent situation, not a, not a, not a temporary situation. And if it's permanent, then it can be treated. And it can be treated for life. It can be managed for life allopathically. Mm -hmm. But in chiropractic, the very definitions that we 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 use, we utilize on a daily basis. Our our vernacular is a hope-driven vernacular. You know, oh when you gosh, tell someone, "Well, your body, when when the signals are not getting your organs properly, that's a state of dis-ease, lack of balance, lack of farming, lack of equilibrium," and so that. That connotes a temporary situation. This is that you're just out of balance. We just need to remove the interference. And better than that, when we do, there's this inborn innate wisdom. That same power that made your body can heal your body. The same power that formed your heart, that formed your eyeballs, that formed your thyroid, that formed your kidneys, that formed your legs and arms and hands and feet. That same power that developed you can restore you back to life and health. And, 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 and then following that can maintain you in a phenomenal quality life for the rest of your life.